Assalam alaikum. In this lesson we will study the comparison between depth first search, breadth first search and A star search algorithm for solving a maze. In last video we studied A star search algorithm and said that A star provides the optimal solution but BFS also provides the shortest search path. So why to prefer the A star search? We also said that the heuristic function in A star is the most important part of the algorithm. In addition to comparing the BFS and A star, I decided to compare DFS and BFS as well in the same video. So this video has three parts. The first is comparing the DFS and BFS. Second part will be comparing BFS and A star. And third part is about the importance of heuristic function and the comparison of different heuristic functions in the efficiency of the A star algorithm. In all three comparisons, we will not do the mathematical calculations, but we will use the search algorithms we coded in previous lessons and will run these searches on different maze cases and will compute the time and other parameters like the search path length etc. for the comparison. So let's get started. We created functions for each of the three searches in the last three lessons. Just to show you one output, I will run the breadfirst search code. The search algorithm is searching for the goal. Goal is found and then there is path through the start cell, defining the shortest path. And finally, an agent traversing that path from start cell to the goal cell. We will compare the algorithms on three parameters. First, length of the search path, or you can say the search space of the algorithm. These yellow colored cells are the cells that were searched to find the path to the goal. So number of these cells is the search space of the algorithm. The second comparison will be on the length of the path from start to the goal cell, which is shown in the blue or the cyan color. And third will be the comparison on the time taken by the algorithm to calculate the final path from start to the goal cell and it is known as time complexity. So in this file we are comparing breadth first search and depth first search. We have imported the two functions from their respective files. Then is import from pyamaze module and then is time it to measure the execution time. We are creating a maze of size 20 by 30 and loop percent as 100% meaning the maximum number of loops in the maze path. We will explore a couple of other scenarios of the maze as well. And here we have called the function BFS and DFS on the one maze generated above. Both functions return three paths. First is the search path, then the reverse path from the goal to the start, and third is the path from start to goal. Since we are running the two search algorithms on one maze, so I will not display the complete search progress as we saw a while ago. Rather, I will just simulate the final path from start to goal, and for the search space, I will not simulate that, but will simply display the sizes of the two search spaces, and then we can easily compare those. In these four lines, we are displaying the two search space lengths of the two algorithms, and also the length of the final paths calculated by the two algorithms. Here, we are simulating an agent traveling on the path calculated by the algorithms. First, a cyan colored agent will follow the path calculated by BFS and then a small size yellow colored agent will traverse the path calculated by DFS. Here we are calculating the time taken by the two algorithms to compute the final path. For that we are using the time it function of the time it module. For that we need to provide the statement we want to execute as a string. Then is the number of times to execute that statement. The default value is 1 million and I have changed that to 1000. Then we need to provide the complete global space of this program to the time it function. It is needed because the statement provided here will get executed in the time it module and the statement is executing the function DFS or BFS which are defined in this file. So the definition of all variables and functions etc are passed to the time it module. And then here we are displaying those times. And finally is the run function to run the simulation. Before I run this program, I would suggest that you should recall that depth first search does not guarantee to provide the shortest path while the breadth first search guarantees to provide the shortest path. So let's run the code. This is the path calculated by the breadth first search algorithm and it is of length 49 cells. And now is the path calculated by the depth first search algorithm and this is of length 57 cells. So the first comparison on the final path length is 49 cells by the breadth first search which is the shortest path from start to goal and 57 cells path with depth first search. The search space which is the number of the cells the algorithm had to search in order to find the final path. We have not simulated that but we have shown the length of that search space. In case of DFS the algorithm search 116 cells and in case of BFS that is 600 cells which means all cells of the 20 by 30 maze. 
So 600 cell search of the BFS versus 116 cell search for the DFS is a big difference. And that is also reflected in the time of execution of the two algorithms each for 1000 times. DFS took 1.1 seconds and BFS took more than 16 seconds. Again that is a big difference. So if you compare these values, the DFS is performing well, but the drawback is that it does not find the shortest path at the end. If you can recall the logic of DFS and BFS, it was very similar except that in DFS we were using the stack and in BFS we were using the queue. Moreover, if you could somehow recall the working of BFS and DFS, in case of DFS we need to save very few cells inside the stack and on the other hand for BFS we need to store many cells inside the queue, especially when there are multiple paths in the maze. So if we talk about the memory complexity of the two algorithms, DFS is better as compared to BFS. You can see in terms of the shortest path, BFS is better, which apparently is a little improvement, like 49 cells in BFS compared to 57 cells in DFS, but on other parameters DFS is performing much better than BFS. But do not make any conclusion at this stage, because we will now see some other maze cases. In depth first search, there is an order or the preference of the movement direction, and when we coded the algorithm, the first preference was west and second was north. The goal of the maze is also at the northwest of the start cell, so DFS final path, although is not the shortest path, but still it is not very different compared to the shortest path. But now let's change the goal as the top right cell, which is the cell 130. Now the goal is cell 130. BFS is following the shortest path and now is the DFS path. You can see it is going very far away. Let's compare the exact values. BFS path is of just 24 cells and DFS is of 250 cells. Now we cannot say that DFS path is just a little large than BFS path. The difference is quite large and even if you compare the other parameters, BFS is performing better in those parameters as well. BFS search 272 cells and DFS search 330 cells. Similarly in the time consumption, BFS has performed better than DFS. So in this case BFS is better than DFS. Generally, whenever goal is near to the start cell or the root node, BFS is better than DFS. Moreover, getting the shortest path usually is a very common requirement and BFS can satisfy this requirement and DFS can result into a very large path compared to the shortest possible path. So in general, BFS is preferred over DFS because getting the shortest path is always desired. Let's see another interesting case. What if we have a perfect maze, meaning a maze with the just one path from start to goal. This is equivalent to a tree in the graph theory. When there is just one possible path from start to goal, the DFS cannot find some other path since there is no other path and hence both DFS and BFS will find the shortest path. So let's see this case. I will remove this loop% percent 100 from the create maze function. The default value of loop% percent is 0, meaning no loop in the maze path. You can see both DFS and BFS found the path of the length 169 cells and it is the same path. And if you see the search path length, DFS has performed better as 552 cells compared to 600 cells of the BFS. The time of DFS is also better compared to BFS. So overall DFS is performing better here. Let's also change the goal as cell 130 with the perfect maze. Again the end path is same and DFS search length is better and execution time is also better. Internally the memory consumed by DFS is also better than BFS. So now we can conclude our comparison between BFS and DFS. When we have a perfect maze or tree, DFS can perform better than BFS giving us the same result. But not every time. If your goal is this cell in the present scenario, BFS will reach here quickly. And in general for multiple path maze or graph, we prefer to use BFS since it guarantees to give us the shortest path, which is quite desired and very important feature and hence generally we will prefer to use BFS over DFS. 
Now that arises another question that why to go for A star search when BFS is giving us the shortest path. So that is the second part of the video about the comparison between BFS and A star, both giving us the shortest path. In another file, I have written the comparison code between BFS and A star. The A star function is imported here. There are two ways of comparison I have done here. Firstly, a maze is searched one by one, showing the complete search simulation. That maze is provided as a CSV file. So let's run the search simulation using the BFS. The algorithm is searching for the goal. Then is the reverse path to the start cell which is the shortest path. The shortest path length is 49 cells and search space length is 600 which are all cells inside 20 by 30 maze. Now the same maze will be searched using the A star algorithm. It is searching the maze and then is the shortest path. It is the same shortest path as calculated by BFS but see that the search space is 55 cells while in case of BFS it was 600 cells. So 55 cell search space of A star versus 600 cells of the BFS is a huge difference, while both are giving us the same shortest path. I will also provide a second maze as CSV file as maze comparison 2csv and you can test the two algorithms on that maze and again you will see a remarkable difference between the search space while getting the shortest path in both cases. Now we have code for the combined comparison. A random 20 by 30 maze will be generated and will be searched by both search algorithms. Complete search simulation will not be shown and just the final calculated path is shown. And the search path length is shown exactly as done in the previous comparison of DFS and BFS. Agents trace the two paths calculated by the two algorithms and then is the time calculation for 100 times execution of each algorithm. Let's make it 1000 as we had in the previous comparison. Let's run it. This is the path by BFS and now is the path by A star. Both calculated the same path of the length 49 cells. A star has searched just 133 cells and BFS searched all 600 cells. That is a big difference. Similarly is a huge difference in execution time as almost 2 seconds for the A star versus almost 16 seconds for BFS. Internally the memory consumption of A star and BFS depends on the search path length. So when A star search length is quite less than that of BFS, then it means the memory consumption of A star is also less than BFS. And therefore A star is better in all aspects. Let's just check it once again for another random maze. The path is of length 49 cells for both cases and search space difference is even higher now. 52 cells search for the A star versus 600 cells search for the BFS. The consume time difference has also increased. Let's also check for the perfect maze having just one path from start to goal. Now we have the small difference in the search space, 488 cells for the A star versus 544 cells of the BFS. But still A star is better. The time of A star is also better. So to conclude A star is much better than BFS. Now the third part of the video is about the importance of the heuristic function in the A star algorithm. If you recall the A star algorithm, the cost of each cell comprises of two parts, G of n and H of n. G of n is the actual cost to reach to a cell and H of n is the heuristic cost which is the estimated cost to reach to the goal cell from that cell. The calculation of this estimated cost is the most important part of the A star algorithm. We define the heuristic function as the Manhattan distance between a cell and the goal. A second option can be the Euclidean distance which is the diagonal distance between the two cells. So now here I have another file for the comparison of different heuristic function for A star. I have created two files for A star search. The first is the one we are already using. It defines the heuristic function as the Manhattan distance. Then in the other file as A star demo 2, the heuristic function is the Euclidean distance. So let's compare which one is better. This comparison code is similar to what we have in the previous comparisons. The maze size I am using is 30 by 40. The two functions A star and A star 2 are used here. A star is having the Manhattan distance and A star 2 is having the Euclidean distance. We are displaying the result here. We are also calculating the time for the 100 executions and displaying that. The first path simulation is for the Manhattan distance and then will be the Euclidean distance.
see that both have calculated the final path of 69 cells, which is the shortest path. Although both are different paths, but the length is same as 69 cells. So both Manhattan and Euclidean distance are providing the shortest path result. But see this difference in the search length. For Manhattan it is 149 cells and for Euclidean it is 1042 cells. That is a big difference and the same you can observe in the execution time. So although we are getting the shortest path using the Euclidean distance as the heuristic function, but the efficiency is not good. In case of Euclidean distance, we are underestimating the estimated cost because we cannot move in diagonal and this path length is less than the actual path length. If we underestimate the heuristic cost, it will give the shortest path at the end but it will not be the efficient solution. Let's see what if we overestimate the estimated cost. For that in the Euclidean distance based A star search algorithm, I will change this Euclidean distance and let's just remove this square root. So it is basically the square of the Euclidean distance and of course that is overestimating the estimated cost. See that the final path length is same for the both cases and Euclidean search space is better than Manhattan. So does that mean overestimating is good? Let's run the code another time before making any conclusion. And see that this time Euclidean final path is not the shortest path. Although the search space is better than Manhattan, but the final solution is not the shortest path. So we should not overestimate the heuristic cost because that might not give us the best solution. By the way the term optimal solution generally means that A star will search the lesser number of the cells to find the goal as compared to other search algorithms and you can even see that here. And if we choose the heuristic function intelligently, the optimal solution is also the best solution meaning the shortest path in this case. We saw the effect of the underestimating or overestimating the heuristic cost on one or two mazes but in order to be really sure about the effect, I have another part of the code inside this file. Here I am generating and solving the maze 100 times. The maze size is 20 by 30. 100 times a new random maze will be generated. The maze is solved using the two A star algorithms, one with the Manhattan distance and other with the Euclidean distance. There is no graphical simulation like agent tracing the path and we will just compare the lengths of the path calculated by the two algorithms. We are comparing the final path calculated by the algorithm in a way that how many times both algorithms have the same final path length and how many times one has shorter path length. And then we are comparing the same for the search path length and then displaying the result. First we will check the underestimating case so the heuristic function is the exact Euclidean distance. In comparison of the final path result, see that all 100 times both the Manhattan and the Euclidean distance function, the final path is of the same length which is the shortest path. So now we can confidently conclude that when we underestimate the heuristic cost, the final solution will be the best solution. But also see the search path comparison. They have never the same search path length and in fact all 100 times search path length of the Manhattan distance is less than the other. So we can conclude that with the underestimate, although we get the same best solution, but overall the solution is not efficient. Now we will check the overestimate case. So I will remove the square root from here. Now this is interesting. In the final path comparison, 65 times out of 100, the Manhattan distance and the overestimated function resulted into the same path length, which of course is the shortest path length. But 35 times Manhattan performed well, meaning the overestimated case failed to find the shortest path 35 times. So we can confidently conclude that when we overestimate the heuristic cost, the final result might not be the best. If we compare the search path length, the overestimated case provided a better result, but when there is a chance of getting not the best solution which is the first priority, this improvement in the search cost is not useful. This is the summary of the effect of the heuristic cost in the A star search algorithm. I will provide all codes in the description and you should test on different size of mazes. So that's all from this video. If you find this helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Moreover, see the other content related to Python programming, PLC programming, machine VN, sensors and instrumentation stress raw available on this channel. Thanks for watching.